Number 42. Suppose a soccer player kicks the ball from a distance 30 meters toward the goal. Find the initial speed of the ball if it just passes over the goal 2.4 meters above the ground, given the initial direction to be 40 degrees above the horizontal. So what I have here is I have a picture drawn, and this line right here represents the goal, and the height of the goal is 2.4 meters. That goal is 30 meters away from where the ball is being initially kicked. And the problem also tells me that that this ball here is being kicked with some initial velocity, that is what we're looking for, at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. Okay, so that's all that I'm given, and I'm looking to solve for the initial velocity. Now, there's not much information given here. So generally speaking, when there's not a lot of information given about either frame, what you want to start doing is start just creating some formulas. We're probably going to have to start substituting, and... Uh, we're probably going to be looking to connect the two frames via time. All right. So let's take a look at what we got. So first, let's look at the X and Y components of the initial velocity. So here's the initial X component, right? I just drew in yellow here. And then the initial uh, velocity component in the Y direction would look something like this, straight on up. Right? So this in black would be the initial velocity in the Y, okay? And then in gold, this part right here was the initial velocity in the X. So let's just try to create some formulas for those two to start, all right? So um, let's first do the initial velocity in the X. Remember, this is just a triangle. I, I need to incorporate the hypotenuse. Even though I don't know the value, I want to incorporate into my formula because I need to solve for it. So I have to put it in a formula somehow. I know this angle and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle, therefore I'm going to be looking at cosine. So we have cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 40 will be equal to the initial velocity in the x direction uh, divided by the hypotenuse, which is just the uh, initial velocity. So now solving for the initial velocity in the x direction, that would give me simply the initial velocity multiplied by cosine of 40. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for the y. Initial velocity in the y, this time we would use sine. So we have sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine of 40 is going to be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction. It's positive because it's pointing up. x was also positive too because it was pointing to the right. Divided by the hypotenuse value of the initial velocity. Now the initial velocity in the y direction will equal the initial uh, velocity. That's the resultant vector multiplied by sine of 40. Okay, so we got these two equations. Now, uh, we can't solve for anything yet. We're just setting up some equations, all right? So let me put some boxes around these guys. All right, now, so I incorporated my initial velocity here into some formulas. Okay, now what I want to look to start doing is I need to now start incorporating the distances that I'm given into some formulas. So let's focus on the x uh, distance or the x displacement first. All right. So let's think about the x frame. Now, are there any accelerations in the problem in the x frame? Uh, no, right? It's a free fall problem. There are no accelerations in the x frame. Therefore, we know that the, um, that the velocity in that x frame will be constant the whole time. So in considering my, uh, my total distance here that it travels in the x frame to the goal, and considering that I want to try to work the initial velocity into my equation, I'm simply now going to choose this. I'm just going to choose the initial velocity, oh, excuse me, the average velocity is equal to the displacement over time. And the average velocity is the same thing as the initial, right? Because it, there is no acceleration, so they're all the same. Is going to be equal to the displacement of 30 over time. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to look to do here again, like I said, I'm probably going to have to connect these two frames via time. So let me solve this thing for time. All right. So we're going to have 30 then over VIX. All right. And let me now do a quick substitution. So I know that VIX is equal to this thing. So let me substitute this on into my equation here. Again, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I need to solve for the initial velocity. And so I need to have that in my equations all the time. And I'm solving now 
my additional equations here for time because I know I could probably take this and substitute it into some time value in the Y frame because they're both the same. Time knows no frame. So here we have now initial velocity is equal to cosine of 40. Okay, so we got that. Now let's take a look at the Y frame. So Y, we know that we have um, a displacement there in the Y direction of 2.4. Right, so maybe I'll just write some knowns down over here on the side. So we know that the change in Y is a positive 2.4, right from the initial point to my final point here. Um, I also know that there is an acceleration in the Y direction, negative 9.8080 meters per second. I also know that the final velocity here um, will be some value in the Y frame. I don't know what it is. The initial velocity right in the Y frame, we do know what it is. We well, not in terms of number, but in terms of a formula, we do know that it is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by the sine of 40. Okay, and what else here? We don't know what time is, right? So what I need to do is I need to now create an equation that involves the given displacement and time. Why? Because I need to incorporate as much information as I can that's given to me in the problem, and I want to start substituting time across these two equations. All right. Additionally, I also want to pick out a formula that involves the initial velocity in the Y frame because I need to get this also into an equation. So thinking creatively here, I'm going to choose equation number two. So equation number two tells me that the change in the Y direction um, will be equal to the initial velocity in the Y multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration in the Y direction times time squared. So the change in Y was 2.4. The initial velocity in the y direction, we said was simply the initial velocity resultant vector multiplied by the sine of 40. That's multiplied by time. And now that's plus 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.80 times time squared. Right? So let's just clean this up slightly. Won't do too much, but it's going to be 2.4 is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of 40. Now times time, plus then, really it's going to be minus, right? Minus uh, 4.90 t squared. Now what I can do is I can now take this time value that I found before and plug it in for time in my equation here and here. Remember, these times are the same. Why? Because when you go back to the picture, I described the X frame from the initial point here to the final point here, and I'm describing the Y frame from the initial point here to the final point here. So since they're both in the same time frame, obviously time should be the same. So now let's substitute it in and let's clean it up. So we got 2.4 is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of 40 multiplied by the time value. Now the time is gonna be 30 over initial velocity times cosine of 40 minus 4.90 times time squared, which is 30 over now initial velocity times cosine of 40, all squared. Okay, so let's start doing some math here. What I'm gonna, what I realize here is I can cancel these two initial velocities, they go away. And I also realize that I have sine of 40 divided by cosine of 40. Now you have to remember this little known that the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. All right, so I'm gonna convert that into now tangent. So let me write it over here now. So we have 2.4 is equal to 30 times the tangent of theta minus now, so let's start working this together. Let's now distribute the square basically to everybody, okay? So now it's going to be minus 4.90 times 30 squared over the initial velocity squared times the cosine squared of 40. Okay, so now let's, uh, why don't we, well, what can we do here? Now I did, well, I just realized I put tan of theta here, but we do know what the angle is, right? The angle is 40. So let me go back. Let me just erase this right here. All right, so this should be tangent of 40 degrees because we know that. So I really like the way this equation looks right now. Why? Because guess what? I have only one unknown. Isn't that wonderful? 
So I can solve it now. All right. How did I know to go about this process? Well, partially through experience. Um, another thing, though, is like I'm saying, I'm looking at the given information. I'm trying to create as many formulas as I can given that information. And I know most likely I'm going to have to connect the two frames because I don't have a lot of information. And by connecting the two frames, what I mean by that is connecting the X frame to the Y frame. I have to do that through time because time knows no dimension. Again, this problem is hard. If you want um, another challenge, take a look at our video on number 37 here in this chapter, chapter three. Uh, the process is actually very similar, basically the same process. So you have two problems here that employ the same strategy. All right, so let's start, let's start solving this. So we got 2.4 is equal to 30 times the tan of 40. So let's do that 30 times tangent, tangent of 40. So we get a value of 25.2, 25.2. And that's going to be now minus. So let's do this. Let's do 30 squared, okay, times 4.9. Then divide that by, well, actually, let's just do that first, all right? Let's do four, just because sometimes it gets a little challenging with the parentheses. So 30 squared times uh, 4.9. All right, so we get 4,410, 4,410 over then the initial velocity squared. And now, Take the cosine of 40, cosine of 40, and then square that. Actually, let me be careful where you, how you do this too. Do cosine of 40, get an answer, and then square that answer. So we get 0.587. So this is on the bottom, 0 0.587. Yes, okay, great. Now what I'm gonna do here, let's, why don't we bring this number on over, 25.2 subtracted from both sides, 25.2. That cancels. Now take 2.4 minus 25.2. That value works out to be negative, negative 22.8. And now that's going to be then equal to a negative, right? A negative. Now do the division here between those two numbers. All right, do the division between uh, 4410 and 0.587. So now we come up with a value of negative uh, 75. 75, 10, because I have to round, and then divide it by vi squared. Now, how do I solve this? Well, simply just switch the numerator and the denominator here, and you'll get a nice little setup. So we got the initial velocity squared should be equal to negative 700, and, excuse me, 7,510 divided by negative 22.8. And now the initial velocity squared will be equal to, so, 7510 divided by 22.8. So we get a value of 329. And we're almost there, guys. Square root it, square root it. And now the initial velocity value will be equal to second square root of 329. 18.1. Wow, 18.1 meters per second. That is the answer. Okay. That will be, and it says find the initial speed. So there we go. So the initial velocity right here is going to be equal to 18.1 meters per second. All right, now this is the way to do it. There's another formula. Let me see if I can recall it. Um, I think it looks, it looks something, it's like change in Y is equal to change in X times, what is it, tangent? I think it's tangent of theta. And then it's minus, uh, what was it, g times change in x, I think it was then squared over two times the initial velocity squared, that whole thing multiplied by the tangent squared of theta plus one. Okay, so for example, in this equation, I think this works. I, I'm pretty sure this is it, I, if, I'm, if I'm remembering it correctly. Uh, just check me, you can plug in the numbers. This value would have been 2.4. This value would have been 30. Okay, the angle here was uh, 40. The G is obviously 9.80. The X again here was 30. Uh, the initial velocity is what we're trying to solve for. And again, here's the variable of 40, right, that angle. Now, uh, the change in X represents this uh, displacement, and the change in Y represents the vertical displacement. So that formula should work, all right? That's a shortcut but you should be able to know how to do the substitutions and whatnot also, because sometimes you might not have a nice 
formula to use and you might have to, you gotta, you gotta learn how to do all the substitutions. So any case, guys, listen, thanks for checking it out. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you next time.